Hi right, guys, just another little quick tutorial today. Someone the other day um, spoke to me and they wanted to uh, create blood. So this is a little bit of a macabre um, tutorial, but it's just going to be some blood spouting, spurting out of someone's neck. Excuse the model, it's not a, you know, it's not the greatest. Um, but this was the model used in the scene, and they want blood spurting out of the neck and kind of land on the floor, and uh, this is just the way I attacked it using end particles. Okay, um, so let's crack on. So we've got a head. Let's create ourselves. Let's open up the end dynamics menu. Um, we're going to create <coughs> end particles. Uh, we're going to what have we got? We've got balls selected. That's fine. Um, yeah, let's create an email. Cool. So there's our emitter. And we're just going to plump that. Well, let's just stick it where we can see it for a minute. Let's just give ourselves something to work with. There we go, we've got some emission of N particles. Now, if you use too many N particles, um, you're going to start to get some playback issues, and, and you'll probably get little warnings that say the nucleus evaluation has skipped. And that's just going to be due to, um, well, uh, it's, it's too heavy computationally. So what you'll end up having to do is just cache it slightly. and uh, Or you could play Blaster Scene, but if it gets to that, then I'll show you how to do it. But in this tutorial, I really don't think it will. Um, so we've got some particles emitting. They're just constantly emitting um, in an omni fashion. They're dropping to the floor. Um, I guess what we'll do is if we just turn this floor, um, we want this floor to be a, a passive object so that the these um, these balls kind of bounce off of it for now um, so we go to end mesh and we'll create a uh, what's known as a passive collider for those of you who haven't used this before um, and if we rewind now we'll see we get some bouncing balls amazing um, now the clever thing um, about n particles is we can do a thing called uh, create n, uh, an n particle mesh um, so let's get the outliner up and if we select the particles um, and we're going to go to modify um, n particles to polygons and look at this so straight away we can see we've got something that looks a bit more of a blood like mess we rewind that we can see that just all glooping down onto the floor excellent who needs real flow huh um so let's just grab the emitter and we'll pull that in there and we'll just play that back again oh, oh look at that excellent so it's going to be some tweaking to do um yeah so let's just go to render hypershade and for now we'll just create a simple blin sign up to the mesh and we'll just make it a red blood like colour sort of darkish Let's get a reflection down, eccentricity down. Okay, so at the moment it looks kind of low res as it was, as it were. Um, <clears throat> let's just pull that out a little bit. And what we need to do is increase the resolution of this. So if we select the end particle. So because um, the end particle, its attributes still work, even though it's, we've converted it to a mesh. <coughs> so we want to go to the section that says output mesh. And here we can start to play around with some of the parameters. Um, we can change the scale, bring that right down so we have you know, less uh, the threshold. And that's going to affect also the way that it all looks and uh, we can take that down to zero okay 
Um, we get triangle size, turn that up and down, it's going to give us another effect towards the resolution. We can turn the resolution up here, it's the max triangle resolution. We can also turn the smoothing up. So at the moment we've got the smoothing to one. We can turn on motion streak. Now motion streak kind of, if you imagine the end particle itself, uh, having a bit of motion blur behind it, if it was sort of travelling and you know translating the, uh, yeah, over time, um, there'd be like a streak behind it, and that's exactly what motion streak does. That would be better for kind of flicking water or something like that. Um, so we just play around with the scale, turn the smoothing up a bit. Loads of fun. Um, so if we mess around with the threshold and the scale, you can get some sort of more realistic stuff going on. Well, I say realistic, side of realistic, but you get what I mean. Let's turn the resolution up again, triangle size down a bit. Moving iterations down a little bit, and I think we've probably got too much resolution in here. So you can see I've got this uh, nucleus evaluation too large. Warning come up. There we go. So when that happens, when you get the warning up, what you want to do is probably best to kick off a play blast. It's the quickest thing to do. So we'll open up the play blast menu and we'll just go 1 to 150 um, start and end and just hit apply. And the simulation will run through correctly. Now we can just keep doing this until we're happy with the end look. It's looking a bit blobby at the moment, but that's it basically, you just need to tweak it a lot and get the sort of look you want. Mine's way too blobby. I'm going to mess around with it a bit too much. Somewhere along the lines. There we go, Let's turn that triangle size up a little bit. So yeah, blood and stuff. Um, in the next tutorial, I'm going to do some blood spurts because obviously, at one stage, this is where a woman was decapitated and there was blood sort of arcing across the room. So, we'll do that. And then, when she laid on the floor, um, who's doing this? Cool. Well, there you go, guys. Uh, just go and have some fun with that. Um, no, I didn't go too much into the resolution, but I'll try and keep these tutorials uh, sort of short and quick and sweet, really. Uh, look, we're under nine minutes and you've learned something. Alright, cheers, cool, nice one guys, bye.